Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. It is Sam I mean Banji. Doing political commentary for everyone here at the uh, meeting this week. Guys, we're going to get serious um, about the Clinton machine here. And we're going to talk Kitty for a while. Um, this show has been picked up by a lot of people. Shout out to Neopa Radio. So I never thought that I'd have to censor the P word. But I think that what I'm going to say is profound enough. And enough of you are going to hit share that I don't want to prevent that from happening because I didn't censor the show. That is how important I think what I'm about to tell you is. Um, you tune in for political commentary, you're about to get the correct view. Okay, first of all, the whole notion of men looking at women like pieces of meat. Do you know that it goes the other way too? It does. Um, on my phone here is a, uh, a picture. That is me at the Legend of Bear Creek. It's the haunted house that I work at. And um, if you get a chance, come on up. It's the haunted house that I work at. And I'm a storyteller then. You go on a hayride and I tell you the story and set the mood for the entire event. Okay. One of the girls there were making comments that I again have to censor for the good of the show. But it involved taking me out of that costume. Now, I didn't think, oh my God, what a raging woman of the night she must be. I hate censoring myself. Um, <laughs> I'm not very good at it. But I didn't think what a, what, a, what, a, what a dirty, rotten scoundrel of a girl this is. I didn't think, oh my God, I was made into a piece of meat. She must be really cheap. I thought, there's suspension of disbelief here. She wants to see if she can throw me off my character. And she wasn't heckling me. She was having fun. She probably had a few drinks and came out to have some fun. Likewise, 11 years ago, Donald Trump was a millionaire. And he made a comment about somebody, and he called himself the B-word for getting shot down. All right, guys, I'm going to be honest. It's happened to me a couple times in my life that I have made a move in a direction that the girl did not want me to make the move in. It makes you feel like an idiot, or as Donald so eloquently quit, put the B-word. And you then sit there and apologize while the girl says, it's fine, don't worry about it, and you feel about an inch and a half high. Many of you know that I've, I've said I've, I've got to enjoy some very beautiful women in my life. Uh, my wife is absolutely stunningly gorgeous, as anyone who sees a passing time video will know. What I don't talk about a lot are the two times that I got shot down. <laughs> um, uh, growing up, in a high school, in junior high, I couldn't have got a date at a female prison on the block that was doing life. Um, people say things. The setting means a lot. If the people you're saying it around know that you're kidding, it's different. For instance, um, I'm frequently making Dago jokes about myself. Italian jokes, I say it to people all the time. Now, if I just meet somebody and they're Italian, they're Italian, I probably won't say the same jokes. I won't deny that I do it. I just won't do it in front of them because I don't know if it's something that's going to offend them or not. That's context. Who was he speaking to? Was it just some people being silly? Okay. Maybe it was more. Let's pretend that it was more. I don't think it is, but let's pretend that Donald Trump is a sexist or a racist or a homophobe or whatever you want to call him. What's he going to do? Really? What's he going to do? He hasn't talked about repealing the 
rights of African Americans to vote. Instead, he's talking about helping the African American community. Is he doing that just because he wants his ego to go up when he does a good job, which he will? I don't know. But if he doesn't like women, the worst he's going to do is make a few dirty comments. Okay, Donald Trump could be a blue dress risk, maybe. But he's not going to be a risk for the kinds of things that Hillary Clinton has done, even if we were to pretend that he was a racist, a sexist, or a fill-in-the-blankist. The other thing I want to get to, um, before I close out, to, uh, what I'm calling Puttygate, and uh, replace the T's if you wish. Uh, I'm calling it Puttygate. This is what I wrote to my friend in California, who um, said that she was talking about Donald Trump being evil. And I want you to hear this. I wrote, she is far more evil. $50 million from Saudi Arabia, who abuses women. That money went to Clinton. How about Trump? Talks dirty of women. Now let's let's stop and compare for a second. He said dirty things about how he made a move on a girl and got shot down. If they're swingers, he did nothing wrong. The most we're looking at here is a scoundrel, a cheater. And we know from the way I've covered the uh, Madison, Ashley Madison leaks how I feel about that. But that, that, that would be the worst that we're talking about here. 11 years ago, he wasn't in office, mind you. He admitted what he did, didn't gloss over it, and apologized. Was it a sincere apology? I don't know. What did you want him to do? Light himself on fire? I don't know, but he at least didn't spin it. He didn't lie. He owned it. He said, I did it. Okay. He did it. I, 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 I accidentally got the van broken into for the van. I told Lake, I have a part of it. That's our manager. I did it. Yep. yep, that was me. He owned what he did. Saudi Arabia burns the female pleasure points of the genitalia off of women. The things that are legal in Saudi Arabia against women are, are countless. They beat women for driving. They can kill them for one of many interactions. Just look up what happens if, if you even do so much as rip your burqa while walking in the street. We'll find out what happens if you walk in certain areas as a woman without a man there, or if the man there isn't a relative or your husband. And this this is this is the people that Clinton's taking money from, and everybody's having this flip out going on. But yet Hillary Clinton is taking money that, from people that do this? Has everyone gone insane at the same time to even to even compare these two? Let's go on. Hillary Clinton as a lawyer got a rapist off and was heard twice gloating about it as recently as 2011. Donald Trump is accused of rape by a person with no name. Well, let's look at that. You can file lawsuits anonymously, and then they get dealt with later. And if you lose it, it could take months or years. By that time, Donald Trump will have already lost over it. We have an alleged rape of Donald Trump. Nobody has any proof of it whatsoever, but it's alleged. Clinton, as recently as 2011. Okay, you got mad about what Trump said 11 years ago, which was very pig-headed at the worst, adulterous at the worst. Um, you have Clinton, who has bragged about how good of a manipulator and liar is she is, that she got a rapist off. The rapist raped a 12-year-old. We have the name of the person, and that person, I believe, appeared at the debates. We know they exist. It's not some phantom under a fake name. So I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me how these compare here. I'm getting more and more listeners in. 50 million from Saudi Arabia, who abuses women, was the first point, uh, compared to Trump, who talks very, you're all caught up. Um, 
this was a quote Force may be needed in the Ukraine. Never mind, you know, the nuclear warheads in Russia that would immediately respond if that were to happen. That's Clinton. You're shocked, aren't you? Trump said that we may need to have an army that is so strong nobody would mess with us. And then he wasn't going to allow Vladimir Putin to buzz our play, our warships anymore. But he never talked about doing this, provoking Russia via the Ukraine into what would likely be a nuclear death for us all. Death for us all. This is from Trump. We need to talk to Putin. If we are attacked, then we have the best army ever. Now, which of them is going to be the more diplomatic option here? Just, just hearing what I just said to you, who is it that you want to see with their finger on the nuclear button? Um, I've heard it mentioned to me that they're worried Trump will start another war. With who? He's talking about getting us out of countries, out of involvements, out of entanglements. The left and the right are both slaughtering him. Oh, he's an isolationist for wanting to get us out of countries. And yet these same boneheads say that he's going to go and start a war. What, are the ships going to come home and then go right back out to start a war? That doesn't make any damn sense. Think before you talk. Use your head for something other than a hat rack. Use the thinking part of your brain. How could that be? The only person that he's talked about attacking at all is ISIS. Maybe I'm a cold-hearted person, but I really don't care too much what you do with ISIS. I've said before, if Clinton kills ISIS, go Clinton. I mean, come on. Really. This, if, if Bernie Sanders suddenly uh, uh, had won it instead of Clinton, go Sanders. I mean, if you're killing ISIS, you're killing ISIS. Other than that, Donald doesn't want to attack anybody, so how's he going to start a third world war? Uh, what do we got here? One more. Once NAFTA, Clinton hates NAFTA, Trump. The evil one here isn't Donald Trump who wants to keep jobs in the country. The evil one here is the one who wants to send our jobs away. Wants to allow things like NAFTA to continue. That is the problem. Not the other way around. So, I mean, th that, that's it. That's what I've got to say on Puttygate. Although I do now want to go ahead and cut away from my pretty face and go to, uh, don't laugh, that's not nice. Go to um, the Washington Compost, who's done everything they can to destroy Trump. They know what the October surprise is. They know that they swift boated him here uh, in the worst way. Well, I'm happy to see this, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm happy to see this because why Why do we want, as uh, what people call the alternative right, which is a name that I'm not completely comfortable with, um, how are we going to lose any respect for Trump because Paul Ryan doesn't support it or because George Bush doesn't support it? We've hated these people's policies for years. Their support means nothing to us. As a matter of fact, if these people are angry at Trump, we're probably more inclined to respect Trump more. I don't know. Did you listening to this want John McCain to be president? No, I didn't vote for McCain either. Um, I think I voted Barr that election. Was it uh, Barr or uh, it was Barr? Um, libertarian that election. This is this here is insanity. Who cares if these people support him or not? Um, again, this is a biased article, but we'll go with it. Uh, Sean Sullivan and Robert Costa and Dan Balls. Balls? I'm going to get censored here just for saying someone's name. Donald Trump declared war on the Republican establishment Tuesday, lashing out its House Speaker Paul Ryan of Wisconsin. Senator John McCainiac of Arizona and uh, other GOP elected officials after his supporters geared up to join the fight amid extraordinary turmoil within the party just four weeks before Election Day. In other words, they have lied and turned their back on their word and we're supposed to care that they have left the party or left the, uh, the support of Trump, I should say. One day after Ryan announced that he would no longer campaign on Trump's behalf, the GOP nominee said as part of a barrage of tweets 
that's a top ranking Republican is weak and ineffective, I agree, and is providing zero support for his candidacy. Trump also declared that the shackles have been taken off him, liberating him to fight for America the way that he, I want to. Good for him. That's the way we want you to, my friend. Trump called McCainiac foul-mouthed and accused him with no evidence of once begging for his support. Well, there is evidence. Um, I wouldn't want to be in a foxhole with a lot of these people. That I can tell you, especially Ryan, Trump said in an interview on the Fox News channel. He said if he is elected president, Ryan might just be in a different position. Good. And he also said that uh, rival Hillary Clinton, who conservatives loathe, have... Uh, his party is harder to deal with. Uh, he's harder to deal with than she is. Well, that's absolutely not true at all. Let me tell you what is true. What is true is that you're having trouble dealing with Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a populist who is standing up for the American people. He's a nationalist in that he wants to put America first. That doesn't mean he wants to hose other countries and that he's racist. It means just what it says. We are not going to send our best jobs away so that you can sell us everything back after you've cost hundreds of thousands of people their jobs and then go ahead and keep all of the profits. Those days are all over. Um, this is from John Rappaport's blog, and uh, it's brought to you by Sticker Junkie, who is going to make you the best stickers ever. So when you check out, as you can uh, see here, as you check out of Sticker Junkie, Make sure you uh, type in the promo code correct use or the correct use. Do it on checkout and save money. Um, let me go ahead and show you this real quick. The CDC police will eventually arrest the unvaccinated as a diseased criminals. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. John Rappaport was also questioning the seriousness of Ebola. So I, I admit to taking everything that John Rappaport says with a grain of salt if I'm going to put him on the show that I'm calling the correct views. And so with, with that caveat in place dealing with him, if he's writing about this being a possibility and he's even mildly correct, it means that things are going to get a lot harder for those that don't get vaccinated. Um, I don't take the flu shot. I won't be taking the flu shot under any circumstances. Um, I'll tell you why. If you, you keep your vitamin C hovering around 3,000 milligrams um, without being gross, uh, monitor that depending on uh, how often you do a number two. Um, I hate censoring myself, but um, right around there. It not only keeps a lot of the radiation problems away that we talk about in the massive Fukushima update, which is the main reason to hit 3,000 milligrams, but also the argument tends to go that if you're vaccinated from the flu, then you're going to be safe, but people who aren't vaccinated are going to be a risk to others. If you are vaccinated from the flu, then how is the person who isn't vaccinated going to be a threat to you? They're only going to be a supposed threat to themselves. Once again, use the thinking part of your brain. That is the most boneheaded argument I've ever heard. Uh, also, thermosol and mercury, those kinds of things do build up inside of you. And you say, well, let me get one vaccine, you get it every year. Um, personally, if I have kids with the way my wife smokes, probably not. I have an iffy on the polio thing because, I mean, what's worth, worse, autism or polio? You might want to take your chances. I don't know, but that's up to the parent. But this is certain. The unvaccinated aren't a threat to the vaccinated, unless, of course, the vaccines are not what they're cracked up to be. Maybe that's what the problem is, and that's, you know, that's, that's why logic and reason like I just gave you are never mentioned. October 5th, 2016, after 30 years as an independent reporter, I understand the machinations of the CDC. As a result, I've been able to read their intentions for the future. I've been able to see where they're heading. Two parallel ops are going on to intersect unless they are stopped. And if they aren't stopped, there is going to be big trouble. Op 1. The CDC's eminent implementation of its new rules for controlling communicable diseases. Um, and, uh, and to sum it up, 
Americans traveling between states can be stopped, detained, and even quarantined if they seem to have indications of illnesses that could impact the public. If this sounds vague, it is. It says the CDC has coined a new absurd category, pre-communicable illnesses. Oh, nice. It means that with fewer or no symptoms, but merely the probability of having contact with someone who had or could have had an illness, a traveler in America can be picked up and held against their will. Now, a lot of this is because we had completely boneheaded people who Rappaport stuck up for and I didn't, who had Ebola and were knowingly breaking quarantines, quarantines that they promised to keep. That is disrespectful. That is rude to the public. And personally, you're a terrible person. I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. But um, this is like saying I have a cold and I'm coughing. People who have AIDS are coughing. So detain me, I might have AIDS. Do you see how this thing works? And people say only you shouldn't be able to own a gun if you've got a mental disease. I mean, that sounds great on paper. Let's pretend someone has a loved one that commits suicide. Later on that week, they lose their job and they have a nervous breakdown. They, they go to the hospital, they're taken care of, and they're fine. They shouldn't own a gun. Well, because they had a breakdown during the lowest point in their life. It doesn't make any sense. But um, that's the kind of thing that sounds good until it's actually applied. Well, here's the second op, he says, the CDC and the state allies are expanding the promotion of mandatory vaccines. And the state of Cali has a law, it's SB 277, for all public and private school children. There was a move to extend the mandate to adults. So suppose you are spotted and detained as a person who may have a pre-communicable disease. One of the first questions that we ask is, are you up to date on your vaccinations? You're going to lie. If not, you'll get them forcibly. Now, suppose the disease you're suspected of having has a vaccine, which you never got. You're bad. You're delinquent. You're essentially a criminal. Sir, if you had been vaccinated against the disease, you wouldn't have the disease now and you wouldn't be in a position to infect others. But why stop there? At some point, the CDC will say, and this is where Rappaport gets a little bit carried away, those people who have not gotten the full schedule of vaccinations are automatically pre-communicable. You know what? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I mean, that's that's a pretty big accusation. I respect it. I, I see where he's coming from. But there's a bigger picture here, even if he is uh, overreacting. It is that for this thing to come up as frequently as it is, it's being talked about by somebody. You're seeing it all the time. And again, I think this is a decision you need to make for yourself. I know that I snowboard all winter. I know that I go to haunted houses, I work in the cold. I may get a cold, I may not, but it's very, really rare. Before I started the vitamin regime that I'm on now, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, look up how to almost never get sick on my site. It's there, and I don't try to sell you anything. I just tell you what I take most of it. It's really cheap, actually. Um, check this out. This is the Seacrest Motel. And that's the place you're going to want to stay at when you go to Cedar Point, when you go to Sandusky. You know, right now, Cedar Point has amazing haunted houses. I work at a haunted house, and I want you to come there. But I also think you're going to want to check out Cedar Point in October. I mean, to be fair, check them both out. And when you do stay at the Seacrest Motel, that's going to make it affordable for you to check them both out because you're not going to be ripped apart on the price that you're paying for the room. Um, you're going to save more how by mentioning the correct views to me. Video, California woman beaten over Trump yard sign. This is from the American Mirror. Um, isn't it interesting that we hear how violent Trump supporters are? They'll find one idiot Trump supporter and make it sound like he speaks for all of them. And yet, they'll take someone like Milo Yiannopoulos or Milo Yiannopoulos Whatever it is. It's all Greek to me. Yeah, anyone get it? No, probably not. Um, he didn't say, well, he doesn't speak for every gay person. That's because the left doesn't like what he says. If he was a leftist, then suddenly he would be the spokesperson for every gay person in the world. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this here. It is once again the left 
who beat somebody over a yard sign, this time a woman. Because they respect women so much, they beat them. That's why they take money from Saudi Arabia to the tune of $50 million. <sighs> it's something that you would laugh at if it wasn't so bad and wasn't affecting the race so very much. You, you really would just laugh at it. Look at the videos I've shot of people. I don't mind that they give me their opinion. Many of the people that disagreed with me on camera were very polite to me. Some of them were incredibly rude. The Trump people aren't being rude like that. I mean, not, not with the frequency. Go to a Trump rally sometime and see. You're, you'll find out what I'm talking about. Or just look at the video that I've shot. We've worked really hard on. A pair of California men went out <clears throat> went on an apparent Donald Trump yard sign stealing spree this week and filmed several of their exploits to the enjoyment of their Twitter audience. Um, that's dangerous, for one thing. Running up on somebody's lawn could have all kinds of ramifications. And then let me guess, you blame the gun owner. Um, citizen, one citizen, I did, I did it, Limor, whose name I just probably destroyed. California residents Angela Mendoza and Rolando Vega as the culprits and combined their video into a single one, likely in the case they were deleted. Lamar resident Angela Mendoza posted this on Twitter, and there's a link to it. The first video shows a woman being beaten on the front lawn of a home while she tries to protect the Trump sign. Bruh, niggas be cracking females like nothing. Hell yeah, the caption read on the cell phone video that was originally published alone on the social media site. As Mendoza crowed about his deeds on Twitter, he laughed off suggestions that he hit the woman. All I did was nigga sock a girl if y'all crazy thinking it was me that smacked her. This reminds me of the, the murder scene with the giant phallic ceramic glass thing from Dr. St uh, no, uh, wrong movie scene, from um, Clockwork Orange. Same director, give me a break. He takes a very phallic symbol and beats a woman to death with it. And when the police at the police station are questioning him, he, they, they say he's a, uh, they killed, that the, his, his victim had died. Mr. Daltoid, your victim has died. Um, he says, surely you jest. It was just a slight toll chalk, which for those of you that like the movie, you know, is Russian for a punch or hit. Um, it was just a small toll chalk. Yeah, I didn't really hit her. No, I just, you know, sort of, you know, and bomb socked her. Which makes me want to cry. The left allows this. How does this happen? Mendoza ID to one of his partners in crime. They really trying to get you caught up. When this article was published, he had merely protected his Twitter account from the public. Now it is deleted altogether. Mentota let his feels be known about Trump tweeting, Ye F Trump. I got to censor that too. Followed by several Mexican flag emojis. You can read it on my screen. I mean, the rest of it's so vulgar, I can't get to it. That's the left. That's the loving, caring, supportive left that's doing this. Imagine if a Donald Trump supporter had beaten a Hillary Clinton supporter over a sign in her own front yard. It'd be on the front of every newspaper from here to Budapest. And that brings us to the donkey of the day. Guys, while I'm doing the donkey of the day, look at these. I love them. Oh. Five bucks a piece. Autographed a seven dollars for both. How do you get one? You go to the correct views. You go to the correct views at hotmail.com and you make a PayPal payment there and uh, let me know which sticker you want or if you want both. And I will make sure that you get them. Five dollars for one, seven dollars for another. I have so many like listeners down there right now. So one of you, buy it. You'll love it. I'll make sure you get it. Uh, it's also all about autographed by the uh, one and only Christelle. All right, guys, dummy of the daytime. Hillary blames a hurricane on climate change. 
says Trump is totally unfit to protect USA from the threat of climate change. That is like saying Donald Trump is totally unfit to protect the country from the threat of the Easter Bunny. Um, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man is more of a threat because he does not exist. Okay? Man is not warming the planet. Things, you know, that great big ball in the, in the sky, more of the light comes out of it. No, not the street light, the one that in, during the daytime. It's higher. It's called the sun. The sun goes through cycles. And right now, it is doing what it has always done. When the sun has been in this cycle, through all of recorded history, long before the invention of the combustion engine, dinosaurs were dealing with this. Uh, places would cool, places would freeze. Why do you think uh, reptile life and even the woolly mammoth was so extant at the time and then died off at certain times? And then you'd find a resurgence, even, you know, uh, not now, but at the time, a resurgence uh, several several decades later. That's why. It's been going on forever. You, you can find this with Lord Moncton. You can find this with Climate Gate. Uh, you can find it in so many different areas. But somehow Hillary Clinton didn't get the memo, and that's why she gets the dumb D of the day here. Check this out. Uh, Tampa, Florida, speaking to supporters in Tampa, Hillary, the worst football team ever. I feel so bad for him. Hillary Clinton says climate change is wreaking havoc on communities across America. Clinton warns that Hurricane Hermione is not the last that's going to hit Florida, given what's happening in the climate. Hillary Clinton, hurricanes have been happening. I'm, I'm not even going to do the, uh, the My Fair Lady quote because nobody's going to know it. Hurricanes have been happening in Florida with great frequency long before the combustion engine, long before coal. This is, I mean, how can you, a comment like that comes out and immediately people in our up in arms say, what are you talking about? That's like saying, uh, you know, the, the, the Japan didn't know about the earthquake that was going to take out TEPCO. Never mind the fact that Japan was created by an earthquake. These people are idiots. But yet she says, when it comes to protecting our country against natural disasters and the threat of climate change, once again, Donald Trump is totally unfit and unqualified. That whole paragraph doesn't make any sense. Hence the dundee of the day. Another threat to our country is climate change. Yeah, 2015 was the hottest year on record. No, that is not true. It is the hottest year on record since the creation of the cycle that they're testing. Go back. I mean, way back. Go back to the 1600s. Go back to the 1400s. When the sun does what it's doing now, the planet does what it's doing now. Either that or those knights in shining armor needed to get the devil out of that Ferrari Stop hauling those goods in that semi-truck, and by all means, stop burning those coal-fired plants. Yeah, that must be it, Hillary. That must be it. Last week's hurricane, hurricane was another reminder of the devastation that extreme weather can cause, and I send my thoughts and prayers to everyone. Yeah, of course, because, you know, Donald Trump probably flipped them off and cursed. Yeah, he doesn't care about them. He just hates people. This is not the last one that's going to hit Florida. No shiznit, given what's happening in the climate. That is just stupidity. Given the fact that Florida is located where it is, it won't be the last one, Hillary. It affects people who lose their homes and their businesses that took a lifetime to build. So if you elect Hillary Clinton, she can do something about natural disasters She's going to fix the climate so that hurricanes don't happen in Florida anymore. If you believe that, you win the dumbie of the day. You're listening to The Correct View. Sam I. B. DeGangie signing off. Um, do me a favor. The Correct Views on Hotmail.com. Donate to me there. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. I'd like to get a camera that doesn't stink. That would be nice. Um, I'm working on things to make the show better. Don't know how it's going to go yet, but I've at least, for those of you that follow me on a regular basis, replaced the really good job I had. And temporarily, things are going better. So, um, hopefully the gear will be getting better and the uh, shows will be more frequent. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening to the show. Hit share. Because if you don't, if you don't, I'm going to say it depends on you.